In the remaining videos about deep learning, we will focus on object detection and learn about how we usually approach that problem using deep learning. In this video, we explain what object detection is and motivate why we think it's a useful problem to study from a multi-object tracking perspective. Before turning our attention to object detection, I'd like to discuss a few different ways that we could make use of deep learning in multi-object tracking. The first alternative is to perform multi-object tracking in a model-based fashion and ignore the deep learning algorithms completely. As an example, we could perform extended object tracking and model vehicles as boxes. Another possibility is to feed the raw data into a neural network that detects objects in the image. In the figure to the right, we have a LiDAR point cloud from the Kitty Vision Benchmark suit, including the intended output from an object detector. In this case, we receive very informative measurements from the LiDAR sensor, but most of the measurements are from the ground, and using deep learning, we may be able to estimate the bounding boxes from the different objects quite accurately, even from a single measurement scan. These detections can then be fed into a multi-object tracking algorithm, which hopefully enables us to extract accurate trajectory estimates of all the present objects. I find this approach quite appealing, but it may be possible to use deep learning to extract even more information from the measurements. One example is that we could use deep learning to compute data association probabilities. A nice possibility related to this is that we may be able to recognize objects that we have seen in earlier measurement scans, which may help us to improve the data association probabilities. Humans are quite good at doing this by looking at the objects. For instance, if we see a person with blonde hair, a green jacket and red pants, we would probably be able to recognize the same person in later images. The idea here would be to do something similar using deep learning. Finally, it is of course possible to try to solve the entire multi-object tracking problem using deep learning. In this case, we would have a deep neural network, hopefully with a clever architecture, and directly ask it to estimate object trajectories from data. In the upcoming videos, we focus on performing object detection using deep learning. And you may ask yourself why we want to focus on this particular application of deep learning. A first argument is simply that the object detection algorithms already perform quite well in many cases. It's also challenging to directly make use of, say, an image in a multi-object tracking algorithm. And we can therefore simplify the problem substantially by first detecting objects using deep learning. Another nice feature is that these object detections is precisely the type of input that our multi-object tracking algorithms seek, where an object can now be modeled as a point object. This means that we can leverage on all the algorithms that you've studied in this course, which also implicitly means that you can leverage on information about how objects move and the models for appearance and disappearance of objects. Finally, it tends to be easier to find data for solving object detection problems compared to, say, solving the complete multi-object tracking problem. For some sensors, such as cameras, there are also pre-trained object detection networks that can be downloaded from GitHub that yield good performance. Let us define the object detection problem more formally. In object detection, we are given some sort of input data, such as a camera image or a LiDAR point cloud. From this, we first need to determine how many objects are present. For instance, if we are trying to detect vehicles and pedestrians in a traffic situation, we would not count the number of trees, bottles, and bags that are visible. Then, for each present object, we want to determine the object type and the object shape. You can see an example of this in the figure to the right. In most cases, the object shape is determined by the parameters of a bounding box in 2D or in 3D. In 2D, we normally use four parameters, where two are used to describe the center of the box, and the other two describe the height and the width of the box. Object detection is challenging for many reasons. To name a few, we may have partially occluded objects, which means that we only see some part of the object. We could also have objects that are far away and therefore look small to the sensor. 